Quentin Tarantino uh, has had a lot going on the last couple of years, at least almost has had a lot going on in the last couple of years. Uh, many of you guys will remember the world got shook when news came out that Quentin Tarantino was developing an R-rated Star Trek movie. And then that nothing came of that. And then we found out last year that Quentin Tarantino has decided and picked his final 10th movie, which won't be his final movie, but he's saying it's going to be his final movie. It was called The Movie Critic. Well, even though this thing was supposed to start shooting in August, it ain't happening anymore. Uh, this comes from the folks at The Hollywood Reporter saying, Quentin Tarantino no longer making The Movie Critic. Um, Quentin Tarantino is going back to the drawing board for his 10th and final film. The auteur had been preparing uh, to start shooting The Movie Critic this year, but is backing away from the project, sources tell The Hollywood Reporter. Tarantino had been honing the movie critic for months, set in 1977, California. It initially drew inspiration from a cynical movie critic that the filmmaker grew up reading, but sources say it morphed along the way into a film that would also feature Brad Pitt as Cliff, Cliff Booth, the stuntman he portrayed as an Oscar-winning performance in his Oscar-winning performance in Tarantino's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. It is unclear if this film was going to be a prequel or a sequel to the 1970 set uh, of Hollywood, but... In recent weeks, Tarantino had a change of heart again and moved away from the film entirely. All right. So Quentin Tarantino has been working for like a year on this movie, was going to be making this final one. He was going to draw an inspiration on not a literal biography, but, you know, based on the idea of this film critic he used to love reading when he was younger. Over the past year, the story has come to include Cliff Booth, which was Brad Pitt's character once upon a time in Hollywood, was going to play a prominent part in them as well. And and Rob, they were going to start shooting this thing in August. I know. Like not a lot. They were going to do a little bit of shooting in August, a little bit of shooting in October, and then go on hiatus and then start the full-fledged thing early in 2025. But th- we yeah. were just a couple of months away from them actually starting to shoot this thing. Guys, we want to take a second to thank a sponsor of today's video, Harry's. You know, guys, in order to start the John Campia show, I had to leave my high paying corporate job in order to set myself up to be happier and enjoy more personal success. Because sometimes to get what you want, you have to challenge the status quo and blaze your own trail. And that's exactly what the folks at Harry's did. You see, at Harry's, they saw customers getting ripped off by questionable products in the shaving industry and decided to do something better. Harry's decided to pave their own road by making beautifully designed razors for a fraction of the price of the other big brands, except Exceptional products, honest prices. That's Harry's. I have fallen in love with Harry's from their foaming shaving gel that feels just luxurious on the skin to their incredible razor that feels just as good in the hand as it does going over your skin. They've got rich lathering skin softening body wash and scents like redwood, wildlands, and stone. You see, Harry's provides German engineered blades made in their own factory that stay sharp longer. You can get a five blade razor, weighted handle, foaming shave gel, and a travel cover for just three bucks at harrys.com slash campia. Don't settle for the status quo. Blaze your own trail with Harry's. Get started with a $13 trial set for just $3 at harrys.com slash campia. That's harrys.com slash campia for a $3 trial set. What on earth? First of all, were you looking forward to the movie critic? And what Uh, on earth do you think has caused Tarantino, who's been sitting on this for so long, to suddenly decide at this point in the game that he doesn't want to do in the movie anymore. What do you think? Well, I'm, you know, I, I've been a huge Tarantino fan since I was blown away. I didn't get to see Reservoir Dogs in the theater. And the first time I saw Reservoir Dogs, I bought it on Laserdisc because I'd heard it was good, you know, make a big splash at Sundance. And it was one of those movies where I put it on and I like watched it three times over the course of a weekend. I loved it so much. And the way it was shot, the way the, the, the characters were written, the actors, I, I'm like, this guy, and, you know, knowing it was an independent film, and, you know, no one knew who Quentin Tarantino was. And ever since then, he's never let me down. You know, all of his movies, even movies that aren't my favorite, like Death Proof, are still a, a lot of fun to watch. And his best movies, whether it's Inglorious Bastards, whether it's uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, whether it's Django Unchained, I mean, all he's done is thoroughly entertain me 
And I've always been impressed by how wildly different his films are. I think, John, I think he might have gone too far up his own ass with The <laughs> Critic. I really do. I think that he wrote something that was so inside baseball to him. You know, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood was very personal to him, yet it was a universal story that everybody could embrace because it was an evocation of the time in America and what Hollywood was like and these actors. I mean, it was such a great... But I think the movie critic might have been a little too inside baseball, even for Tarantino. Mm. This is I know nothing about this. I'm just assuming and knowing a little bit about what the movie is about. I think maybe cooler heads prevailed. And he he probably thought to himself, do I want to go out on this? Like, let's just say this is his last movie like you. I don't believe it is. But let's say it is. Um, I think he wanted to make something that had more appeal. Like maybe this movie was a little too niche. It was important to him, but maybe he thought to himself, and maybe somebody told him, maybe his wife told him, I don't know, <laughs> that will 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 people actually dig this and understand what you're trying to do? Or is it too much? Is it too I think he wants to make something, you know, a little grander that is more accessible to people. I think, think. But again, this is total speculation on my part. Do you think maybe a part of it too? Could be because look, like neither you or I believe that whatever his next film is going to be is going to be it. Like he's he's too much of a creative genius that at some point the itch is going to get him. Some idea is going to cross his head that he'll note he'll write down on a restaurant napkin someday, and then that idea will keep itching with him, and then he'll write a page say, well, what would a story like that look like? I don't know what would it look like. And if it, he's just too much of a creative genius, he's not going to stop. But but. He's convinced that this this next film is going to be his last. Do you think a part of it can then be a self-imposed pressure that, you know, oh. some like, if this is going to be my last one, it better be like the best thing I've ever done. And, and maybe he just looked at what he was putting together and thought, this isn't the best thing I've ever done. Go back to the drawing board. I mean, do you think that could be a part of it? I think that I think that could be a part of it, but I do think that I'll bet it was probably great. Mm. But I do think that he just thought that I might think this is great. But Quentin Tarantino's also very aware of the audience, and all of his movies are wildly fun to watch. He makes movies for his audience. And I think he might have finally come to a point where he he's like, is this what the audience wants? And like you said, he's got an enormous, he put that pressure on himself. But I think he probably said, maybe this isn't how the audience would want to see me go out. Now, I believe, here's the thing about him. I think that, remember, he's always said that all of his favorite directors, he's watched them in the waning years of their careers yeah. make movies he didn't think were worthy of them and that's that's his big fear i think quentin tarantino after watching once upon a time in hollywood and the movies he he made leading up to that he's at the height of his creative powers and i know he's got this imposed deadline on himself but i think he's going to come to realize that he's got another great 10 years before he has to worry about going into decline and maybe this is the catalyst he'll be like maybe this movie was my decline not that it was a bad film but it would just not be a film that would appeal maybe he'll make it for his 11th or 12th movie but i think he's going to come up with something that he's going to go out with a really big bang chances that he does kill bill three as his 10th film i don't think so yeah i would love him to but i don't think he will either i i because i think you know that's that's he's going to do something original and I think I don't see him ever making Kill Kill Bill one and two were conceived as one movie that they split up. Yeah. So so I don't think he would make a sequel if it is his last film as a as a as to go out on because his look his obviously his movies are a pastiche of other movies but they're all wildly original and I I can only see him going out with something equally as wildly original. Guys, question is for you. What do you think about this? This project that has had different iterations, the movie critic being focused on one thing, focused on another thing, morphed into different things. But apparently, even though it was supposed to start shooting in August, it's now dead. Quentin Tarantino does not have a 10th film lined up now. 
How do you feel about it? What would you like to see him do as his 10th so-called final film? But we all know it won't be his final film. Whatever you guys think, jump down to the comments section below and let us know your thoughts. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure you like the video, leave a comment and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget, we have a daily podcast called the John Campy Show podcast available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcasting app of choice. Go and subscribe to it today so it'll be there when you need it.